All right, guys, so it is Saturday. I finally got that silly video uploaded yesterday and it ended up being exactly an hour just by amazing coincidence. Yeah. All right, so today I'm gonna go over just a couple of things that were in that video. And if you haven't watched it, it's uh, Friday, Friday, Friday. And uh, today is Saturday and I didn't get it uploaded until today, but um, that is because when I fell asleep last night, I thought I was uploading it, but apparently I wasn't. So in that video, I uh, noticed that I was running extremely low on screws. This is my backup kit and it just has some oddball, uh, uh, I kind of stopped using it because it didn't have I don't know about this one when I stopped using it because it had this uh, the latch the bottom latch that you have to it's pretty much just held in with like friction it's not really a latch like this just molded plastic uh, caught on something in the truck and broke off so I kind of discontinued using it and I bought a ah, one just like it um, so now I use this and I had noticed yesterday I was out of some particular screws in here, so what I'm gonna do is, and, and I forgot where they were, kinda. Now, there are different screws here, and we'll see that we have some, there's two good examples right there, coarse thread and finer thread, um, which, they work in different, like if I'm using it in hardwood, I'll use the finer thread. If I'm using it in softwood, I'll use the coarse thread. So those actually kind of deserve their own spot in, uh, in, you know, the bends here. And of course they just get mixed up as I'm on a job site and grabbing screws left and right. I sometimes mix them up accidentally. So doing that right now, and just gonna chat about it for a little bit. Some of these screws are actually used. We pull those out and we see, well, that's not used. Um, no, that one's not used either. You can tell screws that are used because the screw head is stripped out sometimes or has, has markings of being stripped out, such as that, obviously, is a used one. So, Basically what I do is I come in here, grab out all the used screws, go ahead and merge some of these, that belongs there, and I guess I'm just going to mix them because I'm kind of running light right now on some of these screws, and alright, so let's move that out the way, let's just go ahead and put those in there. Now, these I use for latches. I've talked about this before. Instead of using these little short screws for latches, which these are a little longer than little short screws, but instead of using that, which comes with the locks, I'll use this one. And that is just long enough not to poke through the wood, uh, through the hole, the two and an eighth inch hole, if you're on a two and three eighths inch back set. So, um, as I've talked about before in a video, presumably that might help a little bit reinforcing the door. I, you never know. May, may not. It really depends on the strength of the door. And the next longer size I use when there is, um, on some French doors on the fronts of houses, they have the super thin trim with another side light window beside it. And three inch screws won't fit, but these are perfectly length for that. And then I have regular three inch screws and then I have the heavy three inch Schlage screws. Now the deal about screws is this right here. The screw has to fit flush for the door to be able to close. Uh, in this particular case, you stack, a, uh, stack another plate on top of this. We'll just use this for a reference, okay. So once this plate is in the door, it has to be flush so that your plate, your decorative plate that you put on top of it will sit okay right there. And then the screw that you use for your decorative plate also has to be flush, obviously for the door to close. So that's the thing with screw heads. 
So here's the thing with screw heads. It's getting kind of hard to find three inch screws that have a smooth uh, countersunk head. And I will show you that. And that's something you gotta watch out for. So I went and got the Uber security the other day. And I'm basically just gonna bought this. Uh, this is really for like probably tying two by fours and stuff together, but it's uber grade and it's got your poundage ratings, which is wonderful for what we want in uh, screws for doors. Obviously, the better screws, the less chance they are breaking or bending or whatever. Now this is nine and nine by in three and an eight. Yeah, nine number nine screw by three and an eighth. This is a number eight screw. This is a number. 12, I believe, countersunk head. And going back to why it's so important to have a smooth head. If we take this, we would think, hey, we can use this and all those memes and stuff that we see in the quote safety advice we take and we put in three inch screws in our door jam, just put it in your existing strike plate. So yes, it would work, but it does stick out a little bit, which if you have a tight door, is going to give you problems so what you would have to do then is you have to mark it and then mortise your your strike plate just a little bit deeper so that you don't have so this doesn't hit the door and scratch the edge of the door so that is one of the biggest problems with screws that have these little wings or uh, grab features and that's presumably to bite into the 2x4 or, or whatever wood that you're putting it in so that it doesn't loosen up but it is not an ideal solution for strike plates without sometimes having to do a little bit of modification so if we go over here and we get some of these 3 inch screws that come with the security strike plates Go ahead and unwrap them. Let's see, they're painted white to match the white strike plate right there. Okay. And uh, I don't know why. In my last video, I went a little tangent of saying kek. So we see this one is has some small little wings on it, but not bad. Not as bad as these. And it sits off just a bit. So they work, you know, obviously when you tighten this down, it's probably going to suck your frame in a little bit. So most of the time you can get by with doing that. But another thing with screws, we're going to come over here and I bought these at a uh, screw, an actual screw and bolt place. These are three inch and you'll notice, what do you notice here about these? Full thread. So this part of the screws we're going to pull one of these out and we're going to see it has it too all right oh my god i just did that again <gasps> uh, i just saw, i knocked myself silly um you'll see that it's got a shoulder and a shoulder and a full thread so that gives you problems sometimes because as we all know in a door frame there's the thin piece of wood that the strike plate is set into all right and oh my god Jason, just stop this video now. So, and then there's a hollow space behind it and then your two by four framing. Once this goes through and catches into that two by four, this part usually doesn't matter, but it can matter if you drive this screw all the way through and it does not grab. There's no two by four stud behind there. Um, based on the old construction of the house, some old houses didn't have, they had weird construction. So what happens is you get this down in there and this just starts spinning and this cannot grab on anything because you've already gone through that thin wood and it just spins and spins and you try to back it out and it's stuck. So you have to get a flathead screwdriver and kind of press up against it as you're backing it out just to start to ease it out. That can be problematic sometimes. You saw me deploy my super tool in that video um, to solve that problem instead of going to get a flathead, which works just fine but other than that we're gonna take all these out of here we talked about this a few videos ago there's actually quite a few of these screws that are in this bag and they all need to be sorted back in there 
So no, I can't go to Huff Cocktails because I'm busy sorting my screw drawers. <laughs> All right, so what else are we doing? This is what else we're doing. We're gonna take apart this sucker right here and see why it started acting up. So the first thing you need to do when you're dealing with this type of stuff is have either rubber gloves on or a lot of paper towels. A lot of paper towels to, to get ready for that. Okay, all right, we're good to go now. Wait, that may have been too many paper towels. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Wait, we need one. Come back. Okay, I got one. All right, so we're gonna pull out our Van Quest. I have been building up videos with this, doing like every couple of weeks to see how it's shaping up. You can see the bag starting to get some bag starting to get some wear on it. And oh my gosh, everything just fell out. Oh, dang it. So yeah, you can see one of the problems with this bad boy. But it is working out. I got I gotta give it that. It's it's holding up. What did I come in here for? I came in here for this. So let's take this sucker apart. Um they were using a L4 or an L2, probably L4, that's more common, and the lock came with a D1 key, so I actually had to use their cylinder. So this one, as you can see, is, is old and funky, and if you look really close right here, you'll see a washer and a gap, and you'll also see kind of maybe, I mean, I don't know if you'll see it or not, but see how it's pulled out? So that plate's bowing this way. And the reason is, is when you tighten these two screws, the panic bar on the inside is held in with two screws, and then this goes through two holes in the inner trim of the panic bar and basically pulls this up against the door. So by nature of the mechanism, by design, when you tighten those screws, this kind of cause that plate to kind of start bowing out over time especially if you torque down on it. So presumably what happened here was, I don't think it was me, but somebody came in and put spacers in at one time to try to fix a problem. Um, but that is not the problem. The problem is, now don't try this at home kids, unless you're prepared for, prepared for it because these things have or kind of ticky to get in apart and back together. And uh, get ready for an explosion of grease. <laughs> I hope not. Pew. Oh, it's spring loaded. You know what that means. When something's spring loaded, that's not a good sign. All right, so let's get that and that. All right, and we're gonna spring off. So there's our plate that's bent through. I could put that on a on a vise maybe and hammer it back flat but we're gonna see the main problem when we get in here All right now there's our hub now this hub is what turns oh, need more paper towel I do need more paper towel oh okay let's get it cleaned up a little bit because it is Gooey. It has got, some, I guess whoever took it apart and put those spacers in there had some, had some grease with them. Because we're going to look, take that out. Um, and actually I do carry replacement tail pieces for these. But we're going to look real close and we're going to see exactly one reason why this has started acting up that is supposed to be flat flat on all sides and you can see how it has jammed up and the metal is bent okay so there's one obvious sign of an issue And we're going to continue taking this apart. Grease, grease, grease. A 
washer, washer. All right, so the inside of that thing intersect with this, which when you turn the handle makes it turn. Let's get rid of the spring and see if we can't get it to, it's not even sitting flat in there and that's probably because that metal's all twisted and messed up. And when you turn your handle, this pushes up against this, which turns that, which lets it turn, you know, whatever. Um, but you can see it's not sitting flat right there at all. It's raised up, which is probably what those washers were on for. And that is because both this is not even anymore. And probably the metal in here is pretty worn out. Let's go ahead and continue taking it apart. That is a little angle. That's the driver. When it pushes down, presumably it intersects with something in there. See what else will come out. Will anything else come out? Oh yeah, here comes the body. Alright. Ah! Oh! Yeah! Slippery! Um, there is a V mechanism in here that intersects with the other side of this V mechanism. Looks like. I don't know if it'll come out. Maybe, maybe pressed in there. Yep, it's pressed in there, but you probably can't see it, but there's a little V mechanism. Go look at this camera angle. I don't know if you're, I hope you're on it. Yeah. If not, sorry. Um, so V mechanism and that, and then we're gonna keep digging down in here. We're gonna knock the, knock the trim off. You would have to turn the key to get that off normally, but I had already done that. Okay, this thing is just, See, that came loose when I did that. Ah, okay. I promise, guys, I'm not going to do that anymore. Don't know what my deal is lately. A little rubber washer that goes where the cylinder tailpiece and plug go into. And this is not... Nothing seemed to be coming apart very easily. But the main problem was that is, those were chewed up. The other problem is gonna be, which I haven't checked yet, but I can guarantee, guarantee you, guarantee you that it's gonna be messed up, is the spring, which is gonna be your lever return spring, uh, behind this plate, which once you get into this, you're way committed. So if you were on a job site and you did all this to try to come in and, you know, uh, some people say, well, grab a file and file that down and square it back up. Well, you're removing metal and it may make it work a little bit better for a time, but there's nothing you can do when these metal pieces like that start wearing out. I mean, you just have to replace it. That's what they sell replacement mechanisms for. Okay, we need to figure out how to get, okay, here it comes. How to get this off, let's see. This may not be a very good video because I can't see, oh, look, look, look. is that it? No. Presumably this has to be pushed through. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. Alright. Now we're getting into the meat of the matter. Yeah, that's going to be that retainer. Uh, if your thing doesn't come out, it's always going to be a spring-loaded retainer grabbing something. So you have to reach in from the inside, which most manufacturers tell you never to do this. And you really never should do this unless you know what you're doing. All right, so we got that other plate off. And let's give this a little pry, see what we get. Is this pressed in?
you know, they don't want you to take this apart. Because it's pinned in right there. They're like, uh -uh. you're not taking that apart. It's pinned in on both sides. But you know what? <laughs> we don't believe in that nonsense. <coughs> Commencing screwdriver tip breakage part one. Please don't break. Please don't break. Ah, ha, ha. Now, you're not, this is, the, if you've done this and you're trying to get something fixed in the field, you're in for it now, really bad. Because you're going to have to get this plate back on. And there's a reason why they don't want you to take this plate off. Ah, ah, almost. Uh, so going back to that video, <laughs> so what y'all think about that? Have you watched my hour-long special? You know, I was so ready. To, I, had, I gotta upload it home because we have such crap signals here in uh, Fondren with Wi-Fi. It takes me forever to upload a video, and I uploaded it at home. I spent like five hours editing that dang thing. And uh, uh, appreciate y'all watching. Go back and watch it if you hadn't. And I know it's an hour, but just remember, it took me, it took me like 15 hours to make. <laughs> so we see the other problem, which is this was this. I had guessed this. Um, we can see this spring right here. Normally, if this spring is in good shape, it probably would not be that floppy. It would be like tight, kind of like that. Okay, so the spring's good. It's weak. It's really, really weak. And I bet... Come back. Now, presumably, you could replace this if you could find one. But if you inspect the spring, you're probably going to find a weak spot on it. But the main problem with the whole thing is going to fall down onto this metal getting these wear spots in the various parts of the metal. All right, so <clears throat> that is my teardown of a N, what was this thing? An N655 by Corbin Russell Company. Used in the ED8000, I think that was, ED8000 panic bar. And uh, if you want to see a couple of clips of me doing that, I have longer clips of like a lot of those, but then it would have been like a three hour video. So I had to just take like 30 second clips and combine them and I was running out of space on my phone. So uh, that kind of became an issue. And I'm going to zip this up here, get it back in my truck. And we are going to uh, take the only other things that I had come in yesterday, which was some keys and a nylon brush. And we're going to go ahead and hang those keys up. And wrap this video up because I subjected y'all to, to a huge video. And I'm not going to do that today. So, you'll notice... Also, also added a strap. Just clipped it onto the handle. Really, really testing this bad boy. I'm throwing it in the back and, and tossing it around and put that strap on there. So that's putting a lot of pressure on the handle. And I can wear it like this. Kind of looks funny. But if I have to walk a long way with tools, it's not great because I like pretty much wear it like that, you know. Um, a lot of flop. I think it might get me one of those one of those thigh rigs and rip it open and pull out my picks and pick shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go hang some keys up. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, or did I mention? I don't remember. I got a cylinder out of it because I had to use their cylinder and I'd already taken it apart. 
and dump the pins out. So I'm gonna put this back into the truck. Two, two, three, six, four, six. Um, so Corbin Russ one is very interesting as far as keying it. And you got Russ one, Corbin, Russ one, Corbin, Russ one, Corbin, Russ one. Which one do I use? I don't know. So I kind of go by this one. You see I have minus one on here. These are for 552 plugs. 552 plugs, which this is not. This is a half inch regular plug. So usually I go by this one, minus one. So two showing up as 207. It's too tall. So minus one is 192. Just right. So two, two. Oh no, that went the wrong hole. Go back in the right hole. Two, two, what did I say? Two, two, three, six, four, six. Three, two, twenty, two to two, oh, seven. Let's try that again. Three, two, twenty, two, two, oh, seven. So maybe three. 222. Aha, I love it. So the first two you drop, the third one you don't. It makes it very easy to rekey Corbin Russ one. 36, which would normally be 267. We'll try. 267. Uh, no. So we're going to drop it one, which is 282, or extend it one. So we'll try 282. Nope. You sure y'all stamped this right? 282, 297 is eight. That's way down here. So six turned into eight. And the reason why you have these issues is because we're not using Corbin original pins. For 237, so you kind of have to make your own bidding chart per se. Let's see how that works. That's kind of crunchy. There's a little bit of catch in there. I don't know what that is. That's probably these front two, which I knocked down to 192. No, it's actually that third one, which, get out of there. What was it, 207, 222, so we'll say 219. This front two, which were both 192. Go ahead and knock it down two since I'm out of 189s because I used them all the other day oh yeah put that in upside down Jason that's a good one. Oh my goodness this was supposed to send my fingers still no this wasn't supposed to take this long okay we're smooth smooth daddy there Corbin Russ one cylinder Corbin Russ one keys And let's put our cap back on and then we'll sling this off into the truck with all its other brothers and cousins. So that when I have need for a D1 cylinder original, I will have it. But I will note that I've got tons of D1 cylinders like this because Several of our hospitals that I'm the locksmith for use Corbin Russ one original D1s and I have tons of these cylinders. But uh, it's always good to have more because I feel I've actually got a lot of customers that use them and I'll probably be using that next year on a job. Uh, unless I've used it before then obviously. So hey, another free cylinder. Okay, let's change out a nylon brush. Nylon brush, changing out of. It's actually not bad. I went ahead and pre-got this because I had to cut all those rustling keys the other day and I ended up not actually using it. So the date was 6.30, which means that lasted a month and a half. 
Yeah, it's still pretty good. Now remember, I got another one over there that I use a lot too. Um, so there's still pretty good, pretty good little bit on there. We'll hold it up to a ugh, brand new one. And I try to keep these wide because um, Kim runs the shop a lot, and actually the when you have to, she's it's she's a girl, but we can see. It's not bad. Um, but I try to keep these long to make it easier for her to brush keys with. I'll probably keep this for a backup in case we get in a bind and for some reason they're out of them. But other than that, I tighten that back down just a bit. Try it. And... Uh, Tuesday when I get here, because I get here before she does, I will put a note right there that says new wheel, because when we're getting a rush and we walk up and we think it's this one, because we're used to doing it on that one, all of a sudden it grabs it. So I put a note right there to say new wheel. And I've got to put these HN keys up, and this little Y6 fella right here, and this fella, and this one. How did these get out on the counter? That plastic... This one goes over here somewhere. Where does it go? That goes right there. And uh, then we'll come over here. <laughs> Yank that phone out. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not gonna, this is it. This is the last part. I'm gonna put that right there. And our CO106 goes up here. And then our Y6 goes down. Is that Y6? Yeah, that's Y6. It's down there. And lastly, these HM keys that we just got in uh, don't have a whole lot of properties around here that are HN. In fact, there are so few properties here that use HN that I know all of them. I know where they are and uh, very familiar with them because we cut everybody's keys being one of the only sources for these. Uh, all the hardware stores always send them to us when people come in with sergeant keys and Y11s. Wait, where was I just hanging those keys? This is this is in my way. I can't see. I can't see. Wait, did I? I uh, think I only ordered 20. Is that 20? I don't know if that's 20 or not. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I guess it was 20. I don't know why it wasn't. Well, I didn't think it was 20. All right, so that is it. Let's move back here. Okay guys, I appreciate you guys watching and uh, all your likes and comments and uh, those of you who have subscribed to me, I appreciate it. Um, I do this, you know, whether it's an hour long video that takes me 15 hours to make or 30 minute video that takes me a couple hours to make or a 3 minute video that takes me 5 minutes to put out. Um, I just try to do just weird content, you know, whatever. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me and watching the videos and if y'all have any questions, let me know or just comment and I uh, appreciate it again. Y'all have a great weekend and I'm going to the dog park tomorrow with the two stupid big dogs. And hopefully I'm going to get some footage for a video that I've been working on for probably three or four months now that is going to be involved with dog rescue. It's not going to be a YouTube thing, it'll be a Facebook thing because that's where all the rescue people hang out is Facebook. So. I'm going to try to do some GoPro footage of the dogs while they're at the dog park out at the water. And hopefully I don't have to give dogs baths afterwards. But again, thanks for watching. Peace. Y'all have a great weekend.